this is Helen from Communic Art and today we are going to be looking at the difference between a wash, a glaze and varnishing our pictures. There's a lot of confusion here. Now I'm going to start off doing a glaze and the first medium that I'm going to use is watercolour. So as you can see in the dish, I've got a deep blue colour, grey blue indigo type of colour and I'm going to create a sky. I've got in that dish maybe 20% pigment, 80% water. So what I am applying onto the white of the paper is a very translucent light layer of pigment. A wash is what we apply onto the white of the paper. As you can see here, I'm working wet on dry, which very simply means wet pigment, wet paint on dry paper. It gives me just a little bit more control where I want some darker nuances in the clouds and some lighter areas. So that is what we call a wet on dry wash. I'm going to do another type of wash now, um, still using the same watercolour. This is going to be a wet on wet technique which uh, the main difference as you can see what I'm doing here now is I'm wetting the paper and I'm going to add wet pigment and this is wet on wet. How is this different from the previous wash that I just did? Basically this type of wash because the the pigment bleeds into the watery surface and blends all the pigment together, it gives me a more even final result. So here you can see I'm working left to right, left to right, just dragging the colour down onto that watery surface and then what I can do um, just to help it blend and bleed in a more sort of harmonic way is to tilt the piece of paper slightly upwards and as you can see the, the pigment is running down and when that dries what I'm going to have is a very very thin even translucent layer of colour. So those are just two very simple washes that we can do. As you can see here, I've got another little sketch of a tree that I did. The tree was painted over the top of the wash, but obviously the wash surface has to be totally dry before I can apply another layer of colour. Otherwise, if I just applied the colour now, everything would blend in and it would go to mud. So what I'm going to do is leave those two washers just to totally dry and then add on the trees as you can see in this image. Now, what is a glaze? How is it different from a wash? Now, in this image here, I've already got a sketch of a couple of trees with these wiggly branches and I've already, it's difficult to see maybe in the image, but I already have a wash layer of colour, very, very faint. What I want to do is make the back layer of that colour a little bit stronger. So I'm going to add another layer, which is the glaze. And as you can see here, I am with just with a piece of cotton taking away some of the glaze colour. So the blue that I've got now in the background is stronger than what it was before. So in very simple terms, a glaze is applied over the top of colour that we already have on the paper or the canvas. 
the wash is applied to the white of the paper. Remember with the acrylic I was using um, to do this about 20% of pigment, 80% um, of water. Maybe to do the glaze I added maybe 30%, just a little bit more pigment. How do we do a glaze with acrylic colours? Now, as you can see here on the board, I've got a little study of a skyscape um, done with acrylic on board canvas. Now, here with acrylic, what I, I'm not using water, but we can use water. I am using golden glaze medium. 20% acrylic colour, 80% golden glaze medium. Now, can you see that um, the colour that I'm just testing on those black lines is once again totally translucent. What I want to do with the glaze is to tweak an image, a picture, in the final stages. It's, uh, it unifies a picture, it adds nuances of colour. Now here I've got this blue sky, white clouds, a little bit flat. I just want to add a little bit of depth. So what I'm going to do is evenly apply the glaze medium. It's really easy and smooth to apply. It's lovely. It's a lovely process. And another really useful point, use a super soft, smooth brush. If you use a bristle brush, you're not going to get an even layer. Okay, so as you can see here, I've just applied that very translucent grey colour. And what I want to do is just pick out some of the whiteness of the cloud, just bring back a bit, a little bit of vibrancy. I'm going to, so I'm going to go in again with the white cotton swab that I had, just to lift a little bit of that glaze colour off. And I think that I'll apply a little bit more to the lower part of the picture. So I'm not doing anything dramatic here. I'm not totally changing the image. I'm tweaking it. I'm just giving it, just adding a little bit of depth just for the um, final layer of the image. So I've applied it again and once again I'm just going to go in with the white cotton swab. Okay, yeah, and just lift some of that grey off just to bring back once again some of that white, some of that white, that vibrant white from the cloud. Now, what I can do is leave this image here to do a second layer of glazing but I have to leave it um, let it dry totally it has to be bone dry if you want to speed up that process you can use a hair dryer which will quicken the process here I'm just adding a little bit more detail there okay dabbing away right and then I'm going to leave it until it is totally dry. You can tell if an image is totally dry because there's no tackiness. When you move your fingers and your hands over the surface of the image, there's no tackiness, nothing sticks to your fingers. So this is the first layer of glaze that I've added. For the second glaze, I'm just going to change, alter the colour slightly. Now, another thing uh, maybe to remember, to create a harmonious gray, um, glaze, first of all, I use the blue that I originally had in the, the skyscrape, just adding a tiny bit of black to create the grey. The fact that I'm using the same colour means that automatically the colour 
is harmonizes because it's all made up of the same hues of color. Now here I'm just testing out this slightly more bluer, greener gray that I've got here. And you can see from the tester that it is a little bit darker, but it is still translucent. So once again, now that the surface is totally dry, with my very, very soft brush, and in fact, I can feel that it's not runny enough, it's not smooth enough, so I'm just adding a little bit more of the glaze mixture before I apply. You can do a glaze with acrylic colour and water without using the glazing medium. That is possible and it, it, it creates a perfectly good um, saturated glaze. So even if you, you know, if you don't want to purchase the glazing medium, then you can just use the water. So you can see that I've added some more of this glaze colour. Okay, and then I'm going to go in. I don't want it, if I add too much of that colour, it's going to be very monotone. It's going to be too much of the same thing. So once again, I'm just playing around with the idea of adding the glaze, adding it below, above, just all around. And then once again, going in with that cotton gauze just to lift some of it off again. about varnishing right at the very end of our picture or as I'm doing here I can use a varnish to create layers as I work. This is an acrylic study of a brick wall. Now here I've got some water-based varnish Sometimes varnishes can be have a very, very strong odour. Definitely, if you're using one of those varnishes, do it outside or with an open window. This is completely odourless and safe. So, once again, I'm using a very, very soft brush. This painting, even though it isn't finished, I've got it to a stage where it is totally dry, absolutely bone dry. Now, I am going to be adding a varnish layer here in the middle of this image because I want to add more colour onto it afterwards because I want to work on a smoother surface and the varnish also has the advantage that it really intensifies the colour. It just brings out the brightness or the depth of the pigment that, um, that I am using. So my aim here is just to apply this varnish, just let it rest, let it dry, and then continue to work over the top. At the end of this paint painting, when I finish it, I will definitely be applying another layer of um, varnish. So we can say that a varnish has a dual role. It serves as a protective layer. It serves to intensify the colours that we are using. So you can use it right at the very end when your painting is dry and ready to be framed or like me you can use it midway just to get back that smooth surface from the acrylic and here you can see totally dry. I'm just moving my hand over. It's got a lovely vibrant smooth surface. I hope 
let's clarify the difference of a wash, a glaze, and how to varnish, how and when to varnish an image. Just to recap, a wash you apply directly to the white of the paper. A glaze is a translucent layer of colour over the top of colour that's already on the paper and the varnish can be used right at the very end for a protective layer or you can use it during the painting process to add a smoothness and to bring out the vibrancy of the colour as you go through the process. I hope that this has clarified um, what these three processes are. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. Thanks and enjoy.